A pastor in Tennessee has been arrested after what are some pretty alarming charges um, and extremely, extremely concerning. We are going to get into all the details of it here in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you on the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, well, it's kind of my only option. I remind you guys as well, if you enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, why not consider blessing my ministry with a generous donation? I could really use your help. There's a couple different ways you could do it. One easy way, just click the super thanks button down below on this YT video here. That is how you can tip me with a one-time donation of any amount. Whatever you can contribute, it helps and adds up. Doesn't matter how small or how big. Or become a premium member of Not By Sight News. You can join my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Not By Sight News. Link in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. With that, you also get exclusive links to these topics that we discuss. I include them up on Patreon now. The way things are getting with YT, you got to be careful with certain links that uh, you put in there they don't like. So it'll be for you on Patreon. We're also there. You can comment censorship-free on all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again. It's patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Tennessee pastor David Barry, who serves as the lead pastor for the Praise and Worship Family Outreach Center, uh, has been arrested on defrauding a man with disabilities of over $27,000. In addition to that, he also had access to his pension and other Social Security benefits for both him and his wife. So how did this whole thing start? Well, it goes all the way back to 2011. His pastor, David Barry, also has a business called Tax Service. And it was back in 2011 when he was appointed the head over this disabled man uh, in his finances, his Social Security, disability payments, all of that. Uh, the man was affiliated with the church as well. Now, Barry is being accused of abusing this position of you know, being the one that was the overseer here of the funds. And prior to this arrangement being made, the disabled man who we don't know the exact extent of you know, what it is that, you know, he's suffering from, but he was not able, uh, he did not have the intellectual capability, according to the report, to be able to, you know, manage his own finances. So he requested specifically Barry to be the one who would be the overseer. Again, he trusted him, you know, he's part of the church. And that's what makes this even more concerning. It wouldn't even matter whether this man had an intellectual issue or not. The fact that a pastor did this in his position is a complete betrayal of trust. And, you know, taking advantage of this man is just, it's, it's sick. But there was an arrangement that was pre-made between the two. And the disabled man had told Pastor Barry that you can take 10% every month out of my Social Security payments and you can use it for my tithe. And so Barry said, okay, that's great. However, that's not what he did. Barry ended up taking a lot more than 10% uh, uh, from this man every single month uh, to give to the church. In fact, between 2011 and 2021, we now know that at least, I mean, over $16,000 was taken from this man, from Barry, as a part of his tithes, which again, well exceeded the 10% that the man had agreed to prior to letting Barry take control. But that is not all. In addition to, you know, taking the extra tithe money, Barry also had transferred over $9,500 from this man's savings account into his own personal checking account where both him and his wife reportedly used the money uh, on dental work, on their vehicle, on restaurants, on other various purchases. Uh, and, and this is, again just completely taken the community by shock. A grand jury has indicted the pastor on multiple charges now, and he may be looking at facing some serious jail time. As far as the church goes, they have come out with a statement now uh, saying that Barry is completely innocent in this, that he did nothing wrong, and this is no more than an attack from the enemy used to take down one of God's righteous leaders. And, and you know, we hear this all the time, right? All these different pastors that we discuss here on pretty much a daily basis and all the stuff that they get caught up that they get caught up in, it's always blaming the Satan, right? Satan just trying to take a good man down. You know what? That is a manipulative tactic that churches use 
in order to go ahead and flip the narrative in their favor. Oh, the pastor was innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. These are a lot of charges here that he is facing, like four of them, in fact. And to say, oh, this man is completely innocent. He took advantage of an elderly man and his wife, who again had intellectual disabilities, whatever they may have been, and took that money and used it for his own gain, for the church and for himself. Two separate instances. The church, again, claiming his innocence. They're saying that despite his arrest, they're going to continue on as normal with Sunday services and midweek Bible study and all of that. But look, I'm curious to know what the congregation thinks about this. If you are somebody uh, who is you know, a member of the Praise and Worship Family Outreach Center there in Tennessee, what are your thoughts on this whole deal? Do you believe the church, that Pastor David Barry, is completely innocent here? Or, you know, are you... You know, just as upset about this as I know so many others are that, you know, your pastor could do this. Betray your trust like this. Take advantage of, you know, this man and his and his wife. Let me know. Again, sound off down below. We're, we're getting into some very interesting times here in these last days. And this exposure of wolves in the pulpit is continuing. I think it's going to continue for a while. And remember what the Bible says, that uh, it will be that judgment starts first in the house of God. And I've said this for a while, that I believe that God is doing a clean sweep of his church, removing leaders that have no business being there and replacing them with truly righteous leaders that are going to have the trust of their congregation and lead the flock in the right way. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on. I do it because, yes, we're in the last days, really the final hours, and Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again a child of God, you will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news link in the description, or just hit that super thanks button down below on this video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.